Now, the internet has killed many things, you know, Michael Richards' career, my sex life, and perhaps most importantly, the record store. Now, at a time when you can download millions of songs at the click of a button, does the actual brick-and-mortar record store still serve a purpose, or is it just a dying beast? Careful, careful! Don't let the beat drop. I, I really didn't sell that, I'm sorry. It's the loop. What are you gonna do? I can't, I wanted to do it, I had him right, anyway. Joining us via satellite to help us make sense of it all is from Brooklyn, Idolator.com editor Brian Raftery and from Los Angeles, world famous DJ and owner of DJ Coulter and Hunting, H- Culture in Huntington Beach. You know him as simply Jeff. Welcome to the show, guys. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Uh, Brian, let's start here because reports are coming out now and they've been coming out for years, but they're really this year especially, they're saying that digital music sales have doubled in 2006, reaching about $2 billion. And as cell phones and TVs become you know, more multimedia friendly, are we nearing the day when the record store could be obsolete? Sadly, I think so. I mean, you know, the fact is not only are tons of kids downloading music legally, but they have so many illegal options to get music online. And, uh, you know, this, there's a whole generation now that really has no interest in walking into a store and talking to a clerk and getting recommendations from employees. Jeff, what do you think? Is it, I mean, because the last time I walked into a Walmart, you know, it was, it was all American Idol pop stars and no one had any recommendations or ideas about music. Uh, you know, is that the way we're going here or, or, or brick and mortar is going to be gone completely? Well, I, I think for the masses standpoint, yeah, I think the, the, the retail store will die to a certain point, but I don't think it will completely die. I know there's a lot of people out there, especially people who are DJs like myself, who, you know, demand going into a record store, actually getting an intangible project, uh, product, feeling it in their hands. Touching the vinyl, uh, there's a lot of people who still want that advice from a clerk rather than looking on a screen and saying, you know, these are the top ten. Uh, people want instant answers, you know, like, I like these records, can you refer me to something? So that's what we do over at DJ Culture. We pretty much give uh, what the people want and more. Well, it sounds like, it sounds like a social environment. And, Brian, that's, that's why I ask, you know, everybody knows high fidelity. You know, what about that scene? Isn't, mm-hmm. isn't a music store supposed to be like this social gathering, a place for people to hang out? Do you think that that might be able to help these stores survive a little longer, or does that not even matter anymore? No, I mean, I think there's a lot of really great niche stores across the country, and I think those are the ones that in three or four years will still be around. I mean, you have places like Amoeba, uh, of course, which is in L.A., which has this fantastic customer service and this great whole staff of music geeks. And you have places like Other Music in New York, which, you know, carries all these specialty, you know, hip-hop, calypso, weird sort of hybrids that you can't get anywhere. But the fact is, for a lot of people and a lot of younger people, They just want the music on their computer right away. They don't really want a mediator there to sort of help them through it. Jeff, what do you think about that? Do you think there's a new generation of people who, who, who don't care about touching the music, though? I mean, obviously, you, your store, you, obviously, DJ Culture has people coming in who right. want that experience, but do you think there's this newer generation growing up that doesn't care about liner notes and actual product off the shelf? Uh, sadly enough, I do uh, agree with him to a certain extent, but there always will be um, that certain niche of people who want an alternative than just being in front of the computer. There's something to be said about going to a record store and actually experiencing, you know, new music and getting um, referrals from people who actually know what's going to rock the floor, um, especially uh, for DJs, you know, for general consensus, for like uh, normal consumers, um, that's a, a little bit different. Now, now, is the internet deciding who, who's the next big thing? Who's exposing these new artists, Jeff? Is it, is it the record store employees that are saying, hey, you're into that, you should really check out this? Or is it really these dot-coms that are saying, here's 1,001 new artists and here's 30-second samples of all their music? I think it has a little bit to do with both. I think it has a little bit to do with um, um, what other DJs are playing. Um, it has to do with a combination of things. But I think, um, for the most part, I think it's a combination of both of them. I think with both stores actually being around and actually help the artists um, get that much farther in a faster way. Now, Brian, so. the last time I checked iTunes, I know they had the, the podcasts and they've got uh, some video casts as well, but they were lacking the Simpsons action figures and the My Chemical <laughs> Romance t-shirts. Uh, do you think, right. you know, stores like Tower Records, it seems like you go in there, they'd have two aisles of music, which was the same clear channel stuff that I heard mm-hmm. on the radio, and then it was four, four aisles of, uh, you know, corn ID badges and uh, Hot Topic hair dyes. Uh, do you think that really hurt Tower Records? No, I think actually like the, they didn't do that enough actually to stay. I mean, they closed in December. And the fact is, you know, Virgin Megastore, which has twice the amount of, you know, My Chemical Romance crap when you walk through right. the door, they did really well last year. I mean, they actually did pretty well for, you know, a, a big record chain. And the fact is, you know, they're just not making it on CD sales alone. You've really got to have all the tchotchkes and the books and 
you know, the T-shirts and all that stuff to bring the kids in. And that's what they want. They want wow. teenagers to come in because they have that income. So it's not about being a record store anymore. It's about being a pop culture warehouse, essentially. I, yeah, I mean, I wish it were the other way. I mean, you know, I, I grew up going to record stores. I love record stores. I love independent record stores. But the fact is, the ones I grew up on have all closed in the last year. I mean, in lots of different cities. And it's right. just... Kit, you know, they just want action figures and they want, you know, some something that they can't download. But what about now, Jeff, let me ask you about the product itself, the music. I mean, as a DJ, obviously you've been in the scene for years. You must be a bit of an audiophile when it comes to downloading. The quality isn't even as good as it is on a CD. Typically, at the end of the day, do you think consumers are going to come back around to that point where they want just the highest quality music they can get? Maybe that is at a brick and mortar store. Well, I honestly don't think consumers really care about that at this point. I think it's really DJs and you know, people who actually play out who really care about sound quality, sadly enough. Um, with like MP3s, even the highest quality, um, 320 MP3, you really can't tell too much. But uh, as far as like uh, if you were to put a vinyl up, up against MP3, mm -hmm. you'll definitely know the difference. But as far as um, a consumer market, right. I think downloading is probably the way to go. It's cheaper, um, it's easier, it's and faster. And someone, someone probably can't tell that the low end's missing on Kelly Clarkson's moment like this. Right, they when really they pop don't, it into their iPod. Yeah, I don't think they really care about that. <laughs> I think it's really um, the DJs, um, the performers who want that uh, special mix that you can't get anywhere else. Uh, All right. Special bootlegs, you know. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I want to thank you for joining us and keeping us in the loop. I really appreciate that discussion there. Now, listen, as of right now, yeah, you know, some are going to tell you that the record store is dying, but. But why shouldn't it? When you can buy the same music, like Jeff said, at a thousand other places and cheaper, you know, mainstream consumers, they're not going to bother. $15 for a CD, kind of outrageous. 30 bucks for an import, that's even worse. You know, these days, if you go to a chain store, you're going to find the same artist that you hear on the radio or the exact same artist that you hear on MTV. There's zero variety. So if I want to discover new, different music, well, I can go see Jeff or I have one easier choice. And that's the internet. It's cheaper, it's faster, the selection's better, and the guy behind the counter isn't the drummer from some crappy metal band. I don't want your flyer, dude. Seriously, take a shower. Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7, only on G4.